After the failure to use repurposed gold technology to defend Earth, the United States Air Force forged ahead with a program to reverse engineer and recreate the technology instead. From these efforts came the F-302 Fighter Interceptor, Earth's answer to the Death Glider, and the BC-303 Prometheus-class battlecruiser, a much larger ship designed to directly take on gold attack motherships. This vessel was the first large-scale interstellar spacecraft built by the Tauri, the name given to human beings beings from Earth by the gold. It was operated and crewed by the United States Air Force under the Office of Homeworld Security, as the flagship of the growing Tauri fleet. The vessel, initially known as the X-303, was built within a top-secret underground dry dock in Nevada under the name Prometheus Project. It was entirely human-built, with reverse-engineered technology recovered through the Stargate program, such as the crystal technology the Gold utilised, as well as the Naquida and Trinium that the ship's hull was made from. As the project was so large and complex, construction work for a number of components had to be subcontracted to civilian companies, though keeping the project a secret proved to be a challenge. As with the F-302, the 303 made use of inertial dampeners to protect the crew against acceleration, as well as including artificial gravity generators. It also used this technology for atmospheric flight, allowing low velocity travel or even a stationary hover. This system was used in conjunction with the ship's powerful sublight engines when taking off from a planet, allowing it to reach Earth orbit in only 30 seconds. In space, these engines could take the vessel up to over half the speed of light, or allowed dramatic bursts of acceleration when under emergency thrust. For rapid deceleration and landing, the ship had retrograde thrusters mounted to the sides of the hangar assemblies, with a trio of landing legs deploying from the lower hull for final touchdown. With lessons learned from the X-302's unsuccessful hyperdrive test, the Naquadria core hyperdrive installed on the X-303 had more safeguards built into it. One of these was an energy buffer to contain the inherent instabilities present within the Naquadria, but this proved vulnerable to interference from strong gravitational waves. During the vessel's shakedown cruise, where it was now officially commissioned as Prometheus, it encountered such waves in hyperspace, which caused a power surge and a premature shutdown of the drive. After another short hyperspace trip to a planet with a stargate, the Naquadria core completely overloaded and had to be ejected from the ship before it exploded. The vessel was eventually patched up using the hyperdrive from a recovered al -Kesh. As this drive was originally from a much smaller vessel than the 303, it could only travel roughly 49 light years before needing to spend two hours letting the drive cool down. After it made it home, this poor drive performance limited it to operations within the solar system protecting Earth. Eventually, after SG-1 once again helped the Asgard with their war against the replicators, the Prometheus was upgraded with Asgard technology, including one of their extremely powerful hyperdrives. This allowed the ship to once more travel across the galaxy, though it lacked the power generation to truly use the drive to its full potential. The external elements of the hyperdrive were mounted to the rear of the two hangars that flanked the lower hull of the vessel. Between them, these hangars housed the ship's complement of eight F-302s, providing the ship with tactical flexibility and strike capability when its own armament was was not suitable. This armament consisted of 24 railgun turrets, capable of tearing through death gliders and dealing substantial damage to Alkesh bombers. These were backed up by 12 missile launch tubes mounted vertically in the core of the ship, containing Naquida enhanced nuclear missiles for taking on larger opponents like the Hatak mothership. The Asgard provided other upgrades to the 303 over its lifetime, starting with the shields. Initially, the ship included reverse-engineered Gorewald shields, but after SG-1 assisted with the replicators trapped within a time dilation field, they were replaced by powerful Asgard shields. These were a significant improvement and could protect the ship from weapons fire from multiple Gorewald ships. During the major refit that included the new hyperdrive, the ability for the ship to transport personnel was augmented through the addition of Asgard transporter beams. These supplanted the existing transportation rings that the vessel had had since its inception, but the rings remained installed as a backup. Since the ship initially lacked Asgard sensors, the crew had to use locator beacons to lock onto objects or people to be transported, though the versatility of the technology more than made up for this downside. Whole groups of people could be rapidly beamed on or off the ship, allowing for the entire crew to abandon ship if the need was there, though the ship still included escape pods. 
On one occasion, the Prometheus even beamed an entire skyscraper into space. The ship included a standard suite of intra- and intership communications. For onboard comms, the vessel had its own telephone network, as well as full integration with wireless radio headsets. Communications off the ship were routed through a pair of arrays on its rear, and consisted of standard audio and video links. A secure link directly to the Oval Office could be set up even without the support of Earth satellites, and it could also do live translation from Goa'uld for audio. However, ancient shielding, such as that protecting Avalon beneath Glastonbury Tor, was still capable of blocking both communications and even the Asgard transporters. The rest of the vessel was fairly similar to Stargate Command, with an infirmary, mess hall offering similar meals, a small brig and brief briefing room as well as multiple remotely lockable armories containing weapons, munitions and assorted equipment. For less secure cargo, the ship had multiple smaller storage rooms as well as a main cargo bay large enough to contain a stargate, which also had a ramp for external access when landed. Access to the decks of the ship was done through elevators using keycards, or if the elevators were non-functional, through a system of ladders. Access to the exterior of the ship was done via a number of airlocks that could be overridden either manually or via the computer. Despite the best efforts of the Air Force, the sheer size of the Prometheus project led to it leaking to inside access news. In a bid to control knowledge of it being made public, a news crew was given a limited tour of the ship, but the camera crew were revealed to be rogue NID agents who managed to hijack the vessel. SG-1 had barely managed to regain control of the 303 when Thor arrived to take them to the Asgard's home galaxy, requesting help with the replicators. SG-1 obliged, and in return the Asgard provided the first upgrade to the 303 after returning it to Earth. It was during the Prometheus's shakedown cruise that the Nequadria core hyperdrive overloaded, stranding the ship and its crew on Tagrea. They assisted its inhabitants with rediscovering the Stargate buried there, and contacted Earth for repairs. Some time later, during the limp home using the Alkesh hyperdrive, the ship was attacked by an unknown assailant and forced into an interstellar cloud. The entire crew abandoned the ship except for Major Samantha Carter, who managed to utilise the hyperdrive emitters to shift partially into hyperspace to escape. After once again returning home, the ship was reduced to orbital patrols of Earth, where it played a key role in the Battle of Antarctica by protecting SG-1 as they searched for an ancient weapon beneath the ice. While undergoing its final refit to include an Asgard hyperdrive, Prometheus was tasked with finding and stopping a cloaked Alkesh under the control of the Trust after they managed to steal the Stargate from the SGC and attempted to start nuclear war to gain control of the ancient weapon in Antarctica. After the upgrades were complete, Lieutenant General George Hammond led a mission to the Pegasus Galaxy to check on the Atlantis expedition, but before they left the Milky Way, they were waylaid by the thief Vala Maldoran. She managed to hijack the ship, causing it to be damaged in the process. After the crew managed to recover the 303, it returned to Earth for repairs. Prometheus faced its greatest challenges when the Ori began exerting influence in the Milky Way. It took part in a successful attempt to stop the first Ori supergate from being completed, but was destroyed above the planet Tegalus by a satellite using impregnable shields and an overpoweringly strong weapon built using Ori technology. Its commanding officer, Colonel Lionel Pendergast, went down with his ship, but ensured that much of the crew was evacuated using the Asgard transports. During its three years of service, the Prometheus played a pivotal role in the protection of Earth, particularly during the Battle of Antarctica. Despite the ship being the only BC-303 ever created, it proved the full capabilities of reverse-engineered technology built by the Tauri, as well as the ability to integrate Asgard technology. It was this that paved the way for the ship's successor, the BC-304 Daedalus class.